Happy Halloween and welcome into week eight after back-to-back -back road games. The Houston Texans are back at home warming up against the Los Angeles Rams at home. Quarterback Davis Mills has thrown four touchdowns, no interceptions, and has a 119 passer rating. The Texans offense looking to find the end zone that has eluded them for nine quarters. Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford has never beaten the Texans, one of six remaining teams the quarterback hasn't been able to win against. The Texans' defense will have a tall challenge in stopping Stafford and his favorite target, wide receiver Cooper Cup, who leads the NFL in receiving yards, receptions, receiving touchdowns, and targets. We get into the week's top stories, players in Halloween costumes, and answer fan questions. Texans Unlimited, presented by Verizon, Halloween edition starts now. We are ready to rock in Houston. Touchdown, Houston! Are you kidding? Baby. Welcome into Texans Unlimited, presented by Verizon, and I'm so excited to have Ted Lasso here co-hosting the show with me today. It's week eight. I'm Danny Rojas. As you can clearly tell, I put a lot of effort into Halloween costume planning. Yes. But we're excited. The Texans are back at home. It's a Halloween game day. It's the Los Angeles Rams, and the Texans are looking to turn things around with a win today. We've got lots to get into, Drew. A lot of shuffling um, up front as we've got a very interesting inactives mm -hmm. list. We've got players in Halloween costumes. We're going to go one-on-one -on -one with Demarcus Marker. But first, Drew, how important is it for the Texans to get back on track today with Davis Mills under center? Uh, you know, it's important. But let's talk about Halloween because uh, we're dressed up, and yes. i got to give you some props for thinking of this, as well as independently, my wife also, like a week after you brought up the idea, which was about a month and a half, ago yes, she said you should be ago. Ted Lasso after we started watching it <laughs> and she went out and got this neat sticker and I dug up some things from my closet and uh yeah so I'm Ted Lasso I got some velcro this is not a mustache actually surprisingly Sur surprisingly that's a, not his real it's mustache. a piece of uh piece of velcro that's probably going to give me acne on my upper lip but <laughs> anyways thanks to you thanks to my sweet wife Vita this is a lot of fun happy Halloween yeah it's a big game Texans need to win uh you got to snap a six game skid and you know, we're going to get into that in a little bit, but we're not the only ones having a little bit of fun uh, here on Halloween. We are not the only ones dressed up. The players got into the Halloween spirit as well. We've got some our some of our player arrivals. This is a lot that. of fun. Max Sharping. The Scarecrow. And Titus Howard. The night. What is that? Nightmare Before Christmas, I Nightmare think. Before Christmas. They're it, channeling it, it, I don't even know what it is. It's awesome. We, it's, we know what the really character cool. is. They're yeah. channeling inner movies. These yeah. guys dress up in costume. Put a lot more effort than we did. Mm -hmm. All right, what's next? Who else do we have dressed up? Ooh. It's scary. It looks like Justin Reed is from Squid Game. Yeah. Um, and, and if I'm wrong, hey, or tweet at me or text me. Uniform or something. And Justin know. Britt is Bane. He's been getting a lot of love. Yeah, he's on the IR. Batman movies. He won't be playing today, but he still is showing his team spirit, supporting his teammates, and showing up in costume. Love to see it. He makes a great Bane. Mm -hmm. Scary. Very scary. All right. And we see Danny Amendola back on the field. How big is he going to be in the return game today? Because Desmond King is inactive. We'll get into some of those inactives a little bit later on in this show. But first, let's get into some of your quick hits of the week. All right, the Texans traded Mark Ingram to the New Orleans Saints this week. Ingram led the team with 92 carries, 294 yards, and a touchdown. He also caught seven passes for 24 yards in his seven games with the Texans. The remaining backs will have to step up in Ingram's absence, according to David Johnson. I think, like you said, leadership, the voice, um, you know, he was always uh, talking, getting everyone pumped. I think now other guys, including myself, are going to have to step up and just try to uh, get our morale back um, and, you know, lead this team. We got a lot of vets on the team. So uh, for that aspect, I feel like um, we got vets and they, you know, they know how this business is in the NFL. Guys get traded, uh, you lose guys and, you know, guys are going to step up. Well, favorite wide receiver target Brandon Cooks will face his former team today. He spent two seasons with the Los Angeles Rams before being traded to Houston in 2020. For Cooks, he's been traded three times in his career, but he says today is just another game. I learned um, the first time being traded to not uh, get your emotions too high going into a game like this. Um, a lot of respect for that organization, a lot of friends still over there and then they definitely want to beat them but from an emotional standpoint it's another game just to get better and go out there and play the best ball that I can possibly play. 
And the Texans defense will have its hands full today as they try to contain wide receiver Cooper Cup. He's the league's leading receiver. He already has nine touchdowns, 809 receiving yards through just seven games. DC Levy Smith says it's the pre-snap communication, though, that the Rams offense does that really keeps defenses on their toes. Well, I, I think their offense, you say, I mean, what causes you the most trouble? Um, you know, uh, their offense is kind of based on a lot of pre-snap motions, movement, shifts to kind of get you, you know, run game-wise, even though they're not a running football team, to, you know, get you out of a gap, and that's how their runs have been effective. But uh, once you start moving people around, there's some, it can cause some indecision. Just him lining up in a stable spot uh, gives you trouble as it is. You know, receiver-wise, some tough, tough matchups, of course, you talked about Cooper Cup, but, um, you know, Woods, uh, Jackson has been in the league for a long period of time. Uh, they use our tight end well. I mean, it's one of those, you know, one of those games we played a similar team uh, last week that, uh, you know, I would say is a passing football team and uh, caused a lot of trouble. It'll be the same this week. All right, let's get into some of the inactives for today's game, Drew. Yeah, this is pretty notable. Today, you are not going to see the following guys. Uh, obviously, no Deshaun Watson off the top. He's not going to play. But Pharaoh Brown, the tight end, is also out. He's been battling an injury all week long, so no Pharaoh. The surprising name, I think, is Desmond King. The cornerback is not injured, and he is not going to be dealt, we think. So read into that what you will, but we'll find out more about it as uh, the, the press post-game press conference goes on. Plus Davion Davis, Jaleel Johnson, and LeBlanc and Moreland there at DB. So what does that mean? That means Scotty Phillips, the running back, Active. is up. That means the rookie tight end, Brevin Jordan, will get to play for the first time in his NFL career. So you might see some more young guys today, and you might see that young guy, rookie quarterback Davis Mills, get to throw and hand off to some of those younger guys. So I know folks might say, well, is this a youth movement? Perhaps a little bit, but I wouldn't I wouldn't expect those guys to just get, you know, 25 carries or 30 carries for Scotty Phillips and, you know, 15 targets for, for Brevin Jordan. Let's see what they do, but it's going to be fun nonetheless to get them out there and see if they have a little bit of juice yeah, to add something to this team. I feel like every week we get asked about Scotty Phillips and Brevin mm -hmm. Jordan. So today is their – their NFL debuts. Mm -hmm. Brevin Jordan hasn't been out there. And Danny Amendola, we'll get to see what he does in the return game. I know you're excited about that. Desmond King, he did some nice things last yeah, week. It's a bummer. In the punt game. So it is disappointing. And you're right. I think David Coley is going to get asked about it in the post-game press conference. He was not on the injury report. Another surprise yesterday, Justin Britt, starting center mm -hmm. on injured reserve. So what does that mean? Because you've got Justin McCray there, who mm -hmm. likely will shift over. We saw him come into the game last week for Max Sharping at right guard. Max was struggling against J.J. Watt last week. So I would assume... You're going to see Justin McCray at center, and you're going to see Max Sharping start at right guard. And then they've got a few other guys that will be active for game day today because that O-line's getting rather thin. Justin McCray was also banged up this week on the injury report. So yeah. um, it, there's a lot of moving parts and pieces, but the one thing that is intact is the D-line. And you got to think, yeah. you got all the D-line guys other than Jaleel Johnson. you got Ross Blacklock. you got John Grenard. Um, you, you've got Jordan Jenkins, you've got Charles Amenahu, you've got all those guys active for game day. Today. And that's a good thing, but like you mentioned, the interior of that offensive line, it's it's going to get tested because you've got the greatest interior defensive lineman in Aaron Donald going against them. So, yeah, he might be licking his chops today. And you know who else is licking their chops? Folks asking questions as we get a look at Danny Amendola. Like you mentioned, he's probably going to be your primary return guy with Desmond King out. So look out for number 89, taking some punts back. But mm -hmm. you want to get into some questions? Let's do it. Where are All people right. watching from, Drew? All right. Well, we got folks from southwest Houston, which is kind of nearby us. But we also got our good friend Christian in Germany, the German Texan who's checking us out. But Keith, the Keith, the Chief Keith, excuse me, uh, <laughs> wants to know, what do you expect from Jordan and Phillips today? And it's kind of like what I mentioned earlier as we look at long snapper John Weeks going through some pregame stuff. You know, I think – Jordan's going to get integrated, and he might get a chance or two to catch a pass. His receiving skills are greater than his blocking skills. You know, he was a great open field receiver at the University of Miami. That's one of the reasons the Texans took him. And then as far as Scotty Phillips, listen, the guy was good in the preseason. He had 155 carries, 155 yards on 30 carries. He had a touchdown in three games in August. And – you want to see what he can do. Now, he hasn't been active for the first half of the season, and a lot of folks, understandably so, have wondered why. Well, you get to see what he can do. 
and maybe what his deficiencies are when the real action is going today. Hopefully there's not many deficiencies, and hopefully he's he's very productive, but Scotty Phillips is a go. So that means also Rex Burkhead is active, Philip Lindsay is active, and David Johnson is active. Those are your four Johnson, Lindsey, Burkhead, and Scotty Phillips active at running back for the Texans. You know, I think what we can expect from Brevin Jordan, and this is just my guess, is that he probably has a package that they've given him, and if he mm -hmm. can sort of master that, we'll see a l little bits of him, not huge doses of him in today's game. You'll probably see Jordan Aikens. You know, if, mm -hmm. if wide receivers or if tight ends are going to get targets, it's going to probably be Jordan Aikens. You're going to see him more so. But I think with Scotty Phillips, with, with Mark Ingram leaving, you need a three down back. You've got a deficiency there. So who is that guy going to be? I don't think it's going to be Scotty Phillips today. I think it's going to be Philip Lindsay, mm -hmm. maybe David Johnson. But if Scotty Phillips gets hot and they start seeing him making, um, uh, getting getting a lot of gains, maybe we'll see more of Scotty Phillips as the game goes on. I, I'm not sure how Tim Kelly is going to view it and how he's going to make adjustments as the game goes on. But I know he has said that in the past, that he likes to go with the hot hand. So... If Scotty Phillips gets hot during the game today, Feed him. I could see him getting more carry. So out of the two of them, I would expect more from Scotty Phillips if the game starts going his way. Absolutely. And if that is happening, things are going well. Uh, and that's, that's what you want to see. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, as we see Brandon Cooks there, number 13, we got a question about Brandon from uh, Daniel. Daniel wants to know, will Davis Mills pass to Cooks more without Ingram? I think he'd still pass to him more no matter who's out there at running back. Yeah. As far as, I mean, you could have Earl Campbell out there at running back, and as far as the receivers go, that's still going to be the guy that gets fed the most. I mean, now for Earl Campbell's running back, you're probably going to hand off like 35 times. But if you do throw, when you throw, it's going to go to Cooks because he's your best player on offense. So, yes, you still will see Cooks get fed, but it doesn't matter that it's because Ingram is gone necessarily, Daniel. Yeah, and I think Cooks, I, I, I want to say like 30% of the targets on offense go through Cooks. Mm -hmm. He is such an important part of this offense that, you know, he's going to pass to Cooks as many times as he can. The one caveat, though, is that you've got Jalen Ramsey on the opposing side. Mm -hmm. And he's going to go one-on-one. -on -one. You're gonna They're going to stick him on Brandon Cooks. So is Davis Mills going to feel comfortable still right. targeting Brandon Cooks? Or is he good, just going to throw those those balls up and see if if, uh, if Cooks can make a contested catch against Ramsey? I think that will be the interesting battle to watch, the Jalen Ramsey, Brandon Cooks battle, because I think that's going to affect how many targets, uh, how many catches that Cooks gets. Yeah, there. it's such an excellent point you make and you bring up, because everyone, understandably so, was asking, well, what are you going to do to combat Aaron Donald all week? Well, as good as Aaron Donald is on the interior, I think Jalen Ramsey is just as good Fantastic. out there as a corner. And we saw some epic one-on-one -on -one battles with him and DeAndre Hopkins where each side, each guy won multiple battles within the games and for the most part, DeAndre Hopkins won more of those wars because the Texans got wins, but Jalen Ramsey more than held his own against uh, DeAndre Hopkins. So, how does Cooks match up, like you say? And how much do you, you go other, or, you know, on the other side of the field right. away from Jalen Ramsey? That'll be fun to check out and that's definitely something that's going to key what the Texans do this afternoon. All right, Alex wants to know who will be the sleepers today, and I'm going to build on what Drew just said. I think with Ramsey on Cooks, I think it might be a big game for the other wide receivers. I would look for Nico Collins. Yeah. We saw him do some good things a few weeks ago. It was pretty quiet last week for everybody, but I, I would think maybe he could be a potential sleeper. Maybe okay. Conley. You see some of the other wide receivers get a lot more targets with so much attention of Ramsey's focus on Cooks today. How about Justin Reed for me? Because, you know, we haven't even brought up Matthew Stafford yet. And Matthew yeah. Stafford is clicking with this offense. And he's got Cooper Cup, who, you know, the se the secondary is depleted now. With no, Brandon, uh, no Desmond King back there, I mean, that's one of your best corners. So everyone else has to step up at the corner. So your safeties are going to get tested. Lonnie Johnson, Justin Reed. So I'm going to go with Justin Reed. you got to have a big game from him today, get some stuff out of him. As you point right now off camera, I, I think Philip some, Lindsay. I know. They're showing us the running back, so I wonder if uh, the camera crew's got a few hints and might some ideas of their own. There's Nico Collins. They're the tight ends. But we saw – I mean, I think the running back certainly drew. You could throw mm -hmm. one of them in the mix, too. Maybe one of them has a big game. Yeah, for sure. All right, another guy that had a big game last week. We didn't even mention him yet. He had a sack. Two tackles for loss at Arizona. He got his first sack as a Texan. Drew Doherty had a chance to catch up with him. Defensive lineman Demarcus Walker. Lineman Demarcus Walker with us. Demarcus, things as a whole, oh, man. tough. But how do you turn it around? How do you how do you snap the skid here? What needs to happen? I mean, just coming together yeah. and uh, just taking it one day at a time. I feel like um, 
this past week, you know, as a unit, you know, we've been able to, you know, just come close together, you know, um, and be able to, you know, just fill in that uh, chemistry, you know, um, still got, what, two more games left? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, just, you know, long way from being over and be able to just capitalize and take it one week at a time. Yeah, it's a good point you make. There's a lot of season left, and, you know, you talk about chemistry as a group. Your unit, defensive line, looked pretty good. I mean, they, they got after the quarterback, and it's a tough quarterback to get to in Kyler Murray. Murray, how are you guys gelling? How are you guys progressing? How much can you build on that, do you think? I feel like the biggest thing is um, use it as a stepping stone. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, um, we've been hearing it all week, and you guys got to put it behind us and be able to build off it and um, push, you, push one another, you know, uh, and be able to um, just – Get ready for these Rams. You know they got a great, you know, system. They got a great coach, great quarterback, mm-hmm. great players, and you know, uh, got a task in front of us. So the biggest thing right now is just dialing in and be able to execute and get ready for you know Sunday. Yeah, we want to talk a little bit about the Rams in just a sec, but more about you. You know, you get a sack, you get two tackles for loss, you have four tackles on the day. Very, very active mm-hmm. last Sunday. How much is that something that you can build on? Because I know you've got that confidence that hey. Give me the shot. I got a chance, don't you? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Uh, that was my you know, I, had a, I, had a, I had a conversation with Coach Lovey and Coach uh, Coach King. You know about just you know, hey, um, to just let me roll and be able to you know help this team any way I can. So um, you know, it was definitely a great week. Uh, but in my opinion, I feel like I could got a lot more in the tank. I, yeah. I can do a lot more. You know, that's not you know something that you know satisfying. You know, so. Um, uh, at the end of the day, you know, we want to get a win. You know, that's the biggest thing. And, um, you know, me personally, just continue getting better every single week. That's my biggest motto, just getting better every week. Yeah. You know? And it starts this week against a Rams unit, an offense, pretty good, pretty high, high-powered. Let's start with a running run game first. Doesn't get as much notoriety as the guys throwing and catching the ball, but Daryl Henderson, Sonny Michelle, what do you make of what they do on the ground as a whole? I mean, I watched Sony when he was at Georgia, so right. I kind of you know see what he brings to the table. And Daryl, actually, you know, he's pretty all pretty good all purpose back. So, you know, keeping those guys tamed and um, you know respecting them, playing the run, and you know uh, when it's when it's time to throw, it's time to throw. But the biggest thing is stopping the run, and uh, got to you know dial it up and put up a good game plan, and um, you know stay gap gap um, gap uh, control and continue um, to play those guys, and then. Matthew Stafford's been sacked just seven times this year. What are they doing to, to keep him from, from from hitting the deck? Oh, man. Uh, they just play well as a unit. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking like from from the front five to the running back to the, you know, the, you know, uh, Cooper Cup. You know what I'm saying? All those guys are really dialed in. You could just tell just, uh, you know, everybody bought in to what Coach McVay is doing over there. So, you know. That's why they're so explosive, you know. Yeah. Just they, you know, when you have one unit, you know, you got eleven guys that's playing, you know, um, at the same heartbeat, you know, it's it's bittersweet, and that's the thing. What what, what we want to do, you know, here, you know. Yeah, and you see they're doing that as a unit, but then if you focus just in on him, what does he do so well? What is Stafford? What makes him so good and, and so effective right now? <sighs> got a got a cannon, you know. <laughs> um, got a cannon. He still can move. Yeah, very smart. You know, just watching the tape, and especially against the Lions, and he just saw things, you know, before it happened. I'm really watching, it and we were and just like, how do you see that? But that's just coming from just – A decade in the league, basically. <laughs> yeah, basically, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, I'm so excited for our opportunity, you know. Going against Colin Murray last week, I was excited for the opportunity, but I'm even more excited for this one, too. Walker for week eight as the Texans get ready to host the Rams doing some good things when he's out on the field and this D-line really starting mm-hmm. to come together Drew with everybody active today I know it's been uh, a little bit of uh, some adjustments in the early weeks for Lovey Smith but yeah. now he's got all of his guys active he said he liked the mix of guys they were really getting after Kyler Murray last week early on in the game things of course did not end the way they want but they hope to turn things around and, and, and fix some things this week yeah cool cleats too that Demarcus Walker's Ooh, wearing yes, there was, I just uh, noticed Jordan's those. from the early days so I like those talking about the cleats now as our good guy <laughs> Steak says in my ear so yeah anyways he is he is a, a good guy to talk with he's he's very very interesting so um, I had a fun conversation with him and 
Why don't we talk about the starting lineups? You want to get into that? Let's get into see some who's, starting lineups. Who's out there? Who's going to be backing up and all that stuff? As you see Demarcus Walker chit chat with Davis Mills and Jeff Driscoll, who's the backup quarterback, number six there. If you know some of you've asked who's who's the quarterback if if he does go down and it's Driscoll. So yeah, there you go. All right. Start off with the starting offense. I'm going to let you take the all defense, right, but on offense, no big surprise. It's going to be Philip Lindsay and David Johnson. Although I don't think you're going to see two running backs out there at the, the beginning of the game, but Conley and Cooks are your receivers. Aikens now the starter at tight end with Farrow Brown, who is inactive today. And then left to right across the offensive line, you got Jaron Christian, Titus Howard, Justin McCray, Max Sharping, and Charlie Heck. They got a big test with this uh, L.A. Rams front and no bigger test than uh, Aaron Donald coming at him like a truck on wheels. That's right. They're going to keep Davis Mills upright. And on the defensive side of the ball, trying to get after Matthew Stafford today, there's your D-line, Jacob Martin, Roy Lopez, Malik Collins, and Jonathan Grenard doing some great things. Leads the team with six sacks right now. Behind him, Camo, Camo Grugier Hill and Christian Kirksey playing with the club today. He injured his thumb, but he's back out there along with Zach Cunningham. And then in your secondary, you've got Vernon Hargraves, Terrence Mitchell, and then backing it up in the back end, Justin Reed and Alani Johnson. I don't you think just we've said talked so, enough you just said about Christian though. Kirksey. Yeah, yeah, you just said something the about the club. I mean, if you think back to 2015, J.J. Watt, he won the Defensive Player of the Year, and for about a three-game span, he had a club. That's right. You know, his hand was wrapped up in tape, so he couldn't really use it. So it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how – adroit he is and how adept he is at, at using that hand with it all kind of bandaged up so we'll see but that's that's kind of a handicap that he's got to work through today and you know we got a question from Jonathan asking about can John Grenard continue to succeed and get into the quarterback I think so I mean he hasn't had any problems since he came back he missed those first two games so he's played in five and he's got six sacks that leads the team that's better than anybody here on the Texans had last year sacks wise it's better than anybody had in 03 04 and 06 which those are different times but nonetheless he's doing well and Grenard they're going to need him to get after the quarterback Matthew Stafford's only been sacked seven times the entire season long so yeah they need a lot from Grenard and the rest of those guys to Marcus Walker Charles Omenahu and so on and so forth I totally agree with you I had a one-on-one -on -one with him and, and Lovey Smith said that he has still left some sacks on the field how how amazing is that? So looking forward to seeing John Bernard. Looking forward to seeing this Texans team yeah. take on the Rams today. Um, and everybody, I hope you're watching in your Halloween costumes. If not, we were very happy to do this show in ours. For sure. And I'd like to wish Tyler Marcotte, our producer, a very happy birthday. Uh, it's Halloween. Yes. We dressed up for him. Also, his Michigan State Spartans won this weekend. So it's just been a great weekend for him. A Texans win would just put him over the top. I don't yep. know what he would do with himself. That's going to do it for Texans Unlimited, presented by Verizon. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great game day. Happy Halloween, and go Texans.